The guardians of the door. <clears throat> How to explain hair hunting to a dead German artist? We <coughs> man dem toten hasen die Bilder klaut. How to explain pictures to a dead hair? What is left? You tell the Parmonim, yo. What is left to the teaching of the German artist after the death of the hair? What is left after the body dies? What has been spoken when the guest left the living and joined the dead? But not as we know it, and yet, we are constantly reminded that the action in Düsseldorf is made visible by both. By a civilized hunter and a brave soldier. And this is even before they were transformed into a singular German artist. Into a person who became increasingly conscious of his own selective autobiographical memory. In other words, the daily retelling about the mirror image of a dead hair lying in his arms. A visible, lifeless animal to support the ceremonies, the rites and rituals, the solitude of a fallen Angel. Now it is indeed in this action wow. in Düsseldorf that the isolation of the German artist elapses. After all, what is left in his arms is always already a design silence, a veiled writing, and it is as real, as readable as a picture can be, which is what happened at the end of his incarnation with a mirror image of a dead hair. No doubt, he 
it is in this given stretched augenblick that the guest began hearing the sound of the German artist landscape to see and to study clearly the substructure of his movement and thereafter to understand the very idea of the German artist recreation by scrutinizing carefully his daily retelling about the mystery of the Schwarzwald, Black Forest and its hidden Volkswagen, timber trucks. Clearly, this is a matter of reading while writing, for it is a process in which one can trace word by word, image by image, the German artist evolution from an appalling past to an iconic picture, from a certain calamity to a process of an endless resurrection. And moreover, one should examine uh, with attention and in details the forced agreement, the artworks that the German artist signed with the blood of their hands. Please note. Au! Vorsichtig, ne? Oh ja. Gott, verdorre. Niemand macht mehr nach der Wiener hin. Nein, nein, ich nicht. Position. Niemand mehr macht mehr nach der Wiener The depiction of mirror image of a dead hair lying in the arms of the German artist is nothing but the act of silencing the voice of the guest. The voice which is imitated by the German artist. But from whom do the guest fear up until now? It is indeed in the way that the German artist appears in front of the guest to make of himself a manner of a soul victim. A met. It is a complex situation, a strange paradoxical masking, a designed teaching which lies at the root of all the German artists' selective ethics, and it is no doubt a framed action that reminds the guest of the German artist's decision to sign his pictures with the blood of a dead hair. At the same time, it is a remarkably integrated journey for the guest. A journey from the visible to the hidden, from a flame into a flame, is an endless renewal of a constant moment of departure. Bearing this in mind, we must accept that in the arms of the German artist, the mirror image of a dead hair in itself is the inconceivable explanation. That is to say, the withdrawal from a unity into a sacred agreement, which is already signed by and between the civilized hunter and the brave soldier. More even, the mirror image of a dead hair is a
From whom do the guests fear up until now? And it is indeed in the way that the German artist appears in front of the guest to make of himself a manner of a soul victim, a man. It is a complex situation, a strange paradoxical masking, a design teaching lies at the root of all the German artists' selective ethics. And it is no doubt a free <laughs> action that reminds the guests of the German artists' decision to sign his pictures with the blood of the dead man. At the same time, it is a remarkably integrated journey for the guests. A journey from the visible to the hidden, from a flame into a flame, as an endless renewal of a constant moment of departure. Bearing this in mind, we must accept that in the arms of the German artist, the mirror image of a dead hair in itself is the inconceivable explanation that is to say the withdrawal from a unity into a forced agreement which is already signed by and between the civilized hunter and the brave soldier more even, the mirror image of a dead hair is a distinctive, selective memory of the German artist. A well-structured teaching about his own definition of social sculpture. A system which he created to operate and maintain itself as an extended artwork. Yeah. And it came to pass. Genesis 7.20. And it came to pass that when Isaac uh, was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his elder son, and said unto him, my son, and he said unto him, okay. Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now, therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field 
take me some vengeance and make me saborim it, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. In thus appears that the initial narrative of a certain dead hair, that is to say, the hunted hair in the arms of a sow, is more than a picture. That is to make its visibility a written demand, a claim which is essential to the understanding of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier. Inclination to promote the German artist into a national remedy. In addition, one finds here that the daily arbeit of the German artist is the way in which he continues to cast shadow on the memory of his devoted public, Emet. It is not simply a matter of legitimate religious practice, but altogether it remains a self-imposed duty, a way to explain pictures to a mirror image of a dead hair by imitating the voice of the guest. This is no doubt a subversive action, a method which the German artist developed for the confusion of the initial narrative of the South, the hunter, with his own rhythm as a sole victim. Indeed, the victim is not a certain individual, but a symbol. And yet, as we can see, the German artist, in his function as a symbolic victim, is always, and therefore willingly, submitted in advance to join the unresolved haunting Gemorto the sacred layout of each and every sub, where a crime against humanity takes place. This is, after all, our concern. And this is no doubt the fear of the guest, the emet of his being, his declared obligation, his urge to explain the German artist devoted public about Hasenjagd, here hunting. In a word, this is the task of the guest, to speak about a crime against humanity that took place in the country of the civilized hunter, a crime that contains the very essence of the crushed aeroplane of the brave soldier. Likewise, the process of forgetting is the subject of humanity's structured memory, an arrangement of a design retelling, which is the sole possibility that is left for the German artist in his effort to redefine and to represent the meaning of disposition, nature, guilt, and death. In light of this, we shall taste and hear the voice of the guest. Emet, the voice of the guest, is a readable layout, a written text about a separate entity, the solemn food of the guest tradition, and it is this which has been masked unveiled by the German artist daily arbeit. The unspoken transformation from the initial narrative about the hunted hair of a sow 
into a mirror image of a dead hare lying in the German artist's arms. Considering this, one can add that the appropriation of the guest's voice by the German artist is the later daily alternation of the guest's perfect typography into a symbol to line above the German artist's faithful public, the lawyer, and devoted onlookers as they continue to guess at the shower fenster, store, the glass window built to separate the devoted public from the German artist Dusseldorf cabin. Consequently, what came out of the German artist action is a step backward into the guest's own initial memory. And as yet, to the question of how is such step backward legitimate, the German artist action for a spiritual healing, one should answer by moving aside and by announcing that the depiction of a lifeless animal in the arms of the German artist is apt to be understood simply as the silencing of the voice of the guest emit. In this temporary silencing lies the possibilities of the German artist to claim the role of the sole victim because he is already always tied to a certain worship and thus to a certain made-ready selective memory. In what follows, it is no way insignificant that the iconic picture which the German artist composed and photographed in his temporarily Dusseldorf cabin is publicly stripped down from both sides by the guest. And insofar as the guest and the German artist self-made picture is a category of covering, originates in the structure of denial and of an endless promotion of disposal, the guest remains operative. That is to say, he is the genuine effort that will eventually separate the depiction of Esau returning from the hand, carrying a dead hair on his back from the new Ott sign that continued to cover the German artist Panim, his face. So, as could have been expected, the German artist is free to cover and to mask his own Panim, to rub his face with honey and gold leaf, or even to render the hunted how of a sound into his own daily voiceful teaching. But as we continue to listen to his picture, it is also necessary to consider the action in Dusseldorf as the very effort of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier to combine the impression of their headlines with the German artist's duty to eliminate the voice of the guest. That much said, we should agree that after the clouds and the rain, things are not the same. In this way, we were told that Yoter Pamonim, Yomile. We were told that only after the action ended, the devoted public was allowed to enter the German artist's temporary Dusseldorf cabin. And it is was there surrounded by his followers that he lit a match and lighted a cigarette. This, after all, was a moment of transfiguration moment of 
recognizable masked identity. What is more, the very meaning of the fallen cigarette ashes, if only for a short time, the ashes fell silently on the floor of a crowded cabin, ashes to ashes into the old craft of carpet dreaming, a woven fabric where one can hear the inner critical voice of the guest, the critical voice against the German artist, called as the sole victim. To be sure, it is a practice of a certain prospect of the civilized hunter in a position of face to face. Panin and Panin with the brave soldier's ambition to engage endlessly with the pursuit of hunting. Consequently, and barely noticed, the guest is continuing to re-read and to re-examine the disturbing sound of the falling ashes that remains central cause to his decision to take a deep breath before going out and knocking on the German artist's entrance door. Is this to say that the entrance door of the German artist could be open and that the guest may enter safely into the German artist's habitat to walk through the masses of endless added pictures while listening to the lifeless animal lying on the Alte Hotschemmel. Well, it must be said right now, the answer remains unknown. After all, nobody can tell which way the teaching of the German artist shifted. At the same time, one must not forget that the guest does not live only by law, but also by memory. Henceforth, the guest must not forget. Even though the action in Düsseldorf took place in a post-war liberal democracy, human rights and democratic values, the guest must always remain on guard. Emet. This moment of exchange from a voiceless voice to a voiceless voice to a voice, full voice, to a voice is possible only because inherent in the image of Esau the Hunter is the action of a self-withdrawal and it is carefully developed reading through endless writing. Each of which is composed of a circle of a perfect sacred void of violation and of memory of a violent death. A memory of a certain brutal design killing that the German artist is trying to forget. It does appear that whether it is a matter of remembering or a matter of forgetting, there is no possible confusion between the German artist and the guest. Because only one of them were the mass. This is indeed the reason the guest chose to treat the German artist's legacy as a selective memory. And this is a met to the guest in Diablo to examine.
examined from a cloned mind the recognition of his own physical being as though he is still being held captive behind the iconic picture made by the German artist in the city of Diesel. But whatever the place and time in which the guest finds it appropriate to examine his misunderstanding with the German artist, it is already a matter of a revealing about atrocity crime. Namely, that in the guest's memory, the picture of death is the confirmation of the voice of the guest. The Macomb, the place where he can read the perfect typography. The Macomb, where he can explain the German artist, devoted public, that the mirror image of a dead hare is not only a symbolic picture of a satisfied hunter, but the, the initial narrative of a sow returning with a lifeless hair from a successful hand is already infinite in its details, and it is far from being reduced to a singular mirror image. But this is what it may, the voice of the guest is still a voice sacred human sound that we are now prepared to listen to. And yet, how shall we reconcile these two people? And who will set aside the German artist unmuted teaching and will listen to the elusive gentle voice of the guest? Here then, and in the close proximity to the guest's voice, it is evident that the massive dark shadow above the German artist devoted public has its structure in post-war political system. This, however, is implying that for the German artist there is less intimate kinship with a guest breathing than his own designed role as the sole victim. Wie man einem toten deutschen Künstler das Hasenjage erklärt. How to explain hair hunting to a dead German artist? This is the answer. And as long as the Western project continues to insist on displaying a work of art as an object of reading, we must remain aware and acquainted with the history of Christianity. In this case, whether or not we care to label the Western project as an endless effort to convert the authentic movement of Christianity into a contemporary philosophy, the reading of artworks in the public space remains deeming veil of distance culture. In any case, it is evident that for artists to take part in the Western project, there is no such thing as a profane object. That is to say, all artworks on display in public space are always ritualistic and forever linked to a certain found sacred text, an arbitrary and therefore a replaceable found text. At this point, it is also worth observing that each and every work of art on display in the public space is both necessarily and impossibility a simultaneous presence of the readable and of the veil. There should be no doubt that it is the veil that produces that attachment of distance and it is clearly the Western project dependence on the perpetual production of art objects, a 
above all, it explained the artist's obsession with political issues. It has therefore become the artist's convention to veil that which is already veiled. This must be kept in mind, for this has become our moral dilemma when we come to speak about reading in public space. After all, reading is part of our fascination with the artist's promise to obscure the connecting structures between contemporary philosophy and Christian theology. Although it is the artist's promise that brings us back to back with the de-Christianizing of the Western project, there is an endless confusion as to know one should prioritize Christian theology and contemporary philosophy. And in the background, we can still see the guest's insoluble dilemma. On one hand, he is forced to be silent on his idiosyncratic reading, while at the same time he makes use of Christian strategy in order to be seen without being revealed. This is the answer. The guest within ourselves is first and foremost an artist in words, because words are the means by which he has learned to veil his name, to hide his doubt, to approximate the value of his fear by criticizing in public his very desire to join the Western project. To begin with, the nostalgia for a lost paradise haunts the guest and continues to throughout his active exilic life, sign here, Joseph Zemmer. So, to be sure, this is the answer, the belief in the power of reading while writing, and it is the force of the guest reverse breathing. The gesture which desired the outcome is to explain the proposition of emet, truth, certainty, honesty, faithfulness, as an established practice, the idea of emet. That is to say, a singular universal M, mother, being united with a motionless met, a deceased male. On this reading, the idea of M met is explained as the basic disagreement concerning the problem of a shared soil. And this is what the Western notion of hospitality attests. Even before the inaugural action of the German artist in the city of Düsseldorf, turned into a picture on the wall. This is an eternal issue, namely the misunderstanding between the German artist and the guest concerning the inherent problem of representation. For it is a constant collusion between the proposition of emet, truth, and the idea of emet, met. But today, after the revelation of the ever-changing Ophic horizon of Galut, it is worth emphasizing that each and every artwork on display in the public domain is the substance of that hidden verbal image, the sound of the inherent problem of representation. Henceforth, one cannot fail to notice that the German artist rule of representation is continuing to veil the unfixed offer of the guest, the trembling calf to which it is referred.
but strangely enough, his knowledge remains hidden and untold to most actors in this drama. Emet, it is understandable because this drama is acknowledgement that the guest recalls in Bereshit at the beginning is always a constant moment from which he began demonstrating the valid process of reading while writing. In other words, the willingness of the guest to enter the German artist's designed universe in the blink of the eye, clearly this extended moment of Augenblick is a sacred moment, a strange moment to allow the guest to walk hand in hand with the mother tongue, namely Ivrit, the Hebrew language. Nevertheless, this walk is not only retelling about a shared image of Esau, the hunter, but is rather the mysterious decision of the guest to enter the crowded cabin of the German artist in the city of Düsseldorf. And to a great extent, it could not be anything else, because the guest had already been swallowed by the Black Forest, which must therefore be shared and to be brought to the forefront of his consciousness as a certain emet, true. Possibility to protect and promote the heritage of his own voice. This is no doubt the principle of the guest breathing in reverse, the words of his perfect layer the world of the perfect typography, and it is, as a matter of fact, the very surface on which the language of Ivrit resides. Now, in M. Met, mother, deceased male, it cannot be but the veiling of Emmet, the truth. And as the guest continues to listen to what the German artist actually declaring in the public domain, he will be forced to oppose the speech of the latter and argue for an intimacy with the language of the Greeks. Hence, we are already listening to the voice of the guest, to his willingness to explain the German artist's devoted public about the gesture of erasure of substitutes and about subtle post-war political sound. And as the guest made this sound a mental note, he will eventually bring before our eyes the reason behind the German artist's inherent action to annex the idea of M. Met, mother, deceased male, as the ultimate logical consequence of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier acceptance that the German artist's role as the sole victim is rewarding. From now, in a reading as in writing, the guest will be a witness to the breathing of the German artist, to read, as it were, in between inhalation and exhalation about the enigmatic post-war sound which led the German artist to veil the legitimation of the language of Ivrit, namely the guest on single determined knowledge that a picture of death cannot be more alive than his own voice. With this difference then, that both of them, the German artist and the guest, are still busy to reclaim a shared narrative, to touch in four hands the same point of departure from which they could represent the public's hope as the eternal descending into a secret empty grave. In a similar vein, as we continue to die, the forced silence of each symbolic dead hair will rise above the German artist's 
masked Ivanino face to dwell as it were somewhere there above the solid clouds in between the frozen drops of water to become one with the sham mind there is water emet true such an identification with the evolution of the concept of sham mind there is water cannot be doubted and with this the initial reading suggested by the voice of the guest Paul Celan Todes Fugger Death Fugger There is water still one might argue that the uh, absence of the guest voice from the German artist's selective memory which eventually forced the former to look at his own panic face as one to one interaction. And it, is, and it is not by virtue of a symbol, but rather as a dynamic rakia, dom, the void that differ in Macomb, less from the daily repetitive loud teaching of the German artist. So, as for the guest, the exchange of a certain language faith with a mirror image of a dead hair can only become a voice in a context of reading while writing. Here one implies that the sacred moment of the guest's decision to enter into the German artist's designated universe is at the same time a disclosure of each and every untimely death. Thus, in many ways, this is precisely the reason why the mirror image of a dead hair lying in the arms of a German artist must be identified in court documents as the picture of a concealed sacred killing. In fact, one can take this a step further by recognizing that each and every picture of a sacred killing is an appointment with itself and it is a process of masking to be written and verified by the dividing trembling calf line which continues to separate what is proposed in the picture made by the German artist in the city of Düsseldorf and that which is represented by the voice of the guest. So it is worth noting that in many ways that the voice of the guest is what initiated the complex reading of Yak Nehas, Yain Kiddush Ner Abdallah's man. Yak Nehas is a mnemonic device to help remember the sequence of prayer of Havdalah of Pesach order meal is held on Saturday night. Yak Nehaz, Yak, Yain, Ka, Kiddush, Sanctification, Ner, Candle, Ha, Havdalah, Blessing of a Fire, Zed, Zman, Season. The prayer of Havdalah Shabbat has a different mnemonic device. Yabne, Ya, wine, spices, candle, Abdallah, blessed. What then have the guests begun to explain the dead German artist? Obviously, he is still trying to tell him about the power of the symbol, the link between a sow, the hunter, in the prayer of Havdalah when Pesach, Passover, falls on Shabbat, Saturday. In addition, the guest will continue to inform the German artist about the very fact that the proposed explanation is at the same time a reading. And the act of reading is at all time a practical writing. In one word, this is the guest task to show that from now on one must strive towards that 
which is granted as emet, truth, even if it is veiled and hidden behind the image of emet, mother, this is male. Remember, this is the reason which forced the guest to climb hand to foot up a selective memory of the German artist and to let himself be swallowed gradually by the dense shadow above the devoted public and then to rise again as a given voice, as a human voice to explain the devoted public about the German artist's skill to evade, to mask and to veil the memory of that heinous killing. More specifically, the voice of the guest is in itself the revelation of a certain heinous killing because it is eminent retelling about the genocide that took place in Nazi Germany. Bearing this in mind, one can say that the German artist is not only busy controlling the conflicting thoughts of his devoted public, he is also trying to remove, and in most active fashion, any possibility that the voice of the guest he heard. The result, one trusts, like the voice of the guest and like the silence of the lies, the lifeless animal lying in the arms of the German artist is more than a registration of a predictable action because it is inseparable from the tradition of the civilized hunter and the hope of the brave soldier. Emet. True, there is no secret here, only one simple rule, and it is not without a consequence for the guest, for it is shows that ultimately he must use defense mechanism to protect himself. But this time, the protective shield is an intimate kinship with the language of Greek, the perfect typography which will protect him from feelings of anxiety and of even guilt. Along the same line, it would be easy to show the reading while writing is the guest's daily impulse to identify himself by his own voice. What is understood? in effect, by measurement in Moed, a motivated gesture by which he restores and calculates the day after day the distance which separates him from the initial Makom. Less. This is no doubt the guest way to criticize the endless added pictures on the German artist wall as much by reading in the public domain as by writing in his own Rakia dome. Let us explain, to begin with, the depiction of the German artist holding the mirror image of a dead hair in his arms is made available by both the civilized hunter and a brave soldier and it is a design message by its very definition. In addition, one can testify in court that the German artist must have known the narrative of the sound. There is no doubt that the German artist is aware that Esau, the hunter, is listed simultaneously in both worlds, the Jewish and the Christian world. In just as a void tears up to reveal a new void, like the depiction of his masked panim face in the picture which the German artist took in the city of Düsseldorf.
So, what is important to know is that the mirror image of a dead hair is more than a picture because it remains a subversive method of a certain selective memory of legitimize and to maintain the substance of the paranoid whispering the paranoid suffering of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier as a result the German artist psychological recovery is a persistent daily arbeit in one word as an extended existential post-war therapy still one might seek to say that this daily arbeit has become the only possibility of his devoted public to heal themselves and in particular to be situated in the proximity of the idea of M. Met, a mother, a deceased man, is a continual denial of a terrifying moment of a Met, truth, memory. That is to say, the guest's fearful memory of a design mass killing that took place in the land of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier. Now, the process of transforming a med into M med is in itself a transformation and it is a testament to the ceaseless arbeit of the German art. As such, the German artist himself became the language of a ritual celebration. So to say, he himself became a public worship to be performed not as a decisive formation of the symbolic function of a hair hunting, but as a subversive action attributed to the significance representation of his own post-reform autobiography. Still, one might seek to argue that the depiction of the German artist, together with a mirror image of a dead hair, is already the issue of a mad ready. That is the persistent footnote to the greater misunderstanding between Emet. This basic misunderstanding needs no explanation, for it is already bound to the transformation of the guest, perfect typography, into the German artist idea of withdrawal and interpretation one considered to be transformation of the voice of the guest into a certain therapeutic action for healing the German artist devoted to public song. Yo. Who worked that on the day? Who worked that on the day? This is not a bit of a problem, but I think it's pretty much. We are going to do everything. I have the fact that we can look at how we can do it. We have to go to the beneden. Oh, that's great. And then I'm going to lunch and then I'm going to tell you. Maar gaat het goed of is het vermoeiend? Leef glas water hier. Dan komt 
the last tour, namely the German artist readiness to gain a position of power at the expense of the soul of the guest. But once the German artist began to identify himself as a soul victim, the visibility of M met is in him, for it is for all time a dense cloud above the reading of a met. True. But once the German artist began to identify himself as a soul victim, the visibility of M met is in him. For it is for all time a dense cloud above the reading of a mess. And how in a met Truth could it be otherwise than a picture of M. Met, mother, a deceased man? This amounts to saying that in the realm of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier, the German artist is represented as the sole victim and the guest is identified as the betraying witness. What follows is meant to suggest that the guest is essentially fitting now to explore and to ask whether his employment as the betraying witness is not in fact thought already by the Western tradition. More following the traces of a sow the hunter from a readable text to a mirror image. And similarly, the transformation of the language of Ivrit into a German vocabulary, we all must pause and read carefully the following notes. The victim's name is the name of the unnamed which is therefore the name of the other. And the name of the other is already always linked to the voice of the guest. However, to be the voice of the guest is no less a step of being both, of being kept at a distance from being account for each and every added pictures on the German artist board. Of course, to be sure, both states of mind are existed and known to the guests, and yet both of them are still waiting to become a picture of his own work. Just so it seems in our case, the guest can no longer follow the teaching of the German artist. The guest cannot but let his own voice to become visible. That is to say that the guest must scrutinize line by line, picture by picture, the subversive message behind the transformation of a sow the hunter into the German artist's qualification as an ultima remedy. So what follows is meant to suggest a responsive and responsible reading while writing. A strange argument that seeks to understand the ritual of the blessing of the firstborn son. The very words the guest wished to convey to the German artist's devoted public about the symbol of Hasen Jagen Such in any case is the tradition, if not the habit of the German 
civilized hunter and the German rev soldier to take a photo of themselves together with a lifeless animal. So, uh, what uh, do photos, uh, the trophy picture for a successful hunt represent and thus communicate to the devoted public? In this a question that a guest called us, a mate. This is certainly not a question to be answered by the guest, for it is already always linked to the problem of shared territory, to the German artist's knowledge over his devoted public and his skill to fly above the black forest. Nevertheless, like the revelation of the misunderstanding between the German artist and the guest at the very moment of representation, the desire is the same. For both of them, wish to be simultaneously named as the first born and as the second. Even if we had not known this, we must accept that the narrative of Schnee Goim, two nations, two people, is still a picture of an isolated message of a certain uncoordinated encounter with the someone else back. After all, no one is willing to be identified as a sound. So it goes without saying that according to the guest, the German artist's arbeit is essentially a teaching of one side that this might be so a Christian, a part of law, a retelling of a fixed selective memory which allows him to hide and at the same time to use at will the critical image of a sound anthem. On the other hand, once the initial narrative of the sound, the hunter is visible in the realm of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier. Then the image of the law of Yakne Hars must be represented together with the voice of the guest. By this time, the voice of the guest is not the voice. It is in the voice. It is in the guest. And it is deeply buried beneath his soul. In the time to follow, the guest must be known as the reliable witness. The power of a med, true function, the image of the process of reading while writing, namely the combined view concerning Pidion Haben, the redemption of the first born. Yet, in the realm of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier, the voice of the guest is the voice of the guest. In so far as his panim, his face is recognized as the panim of the Torah, i.e. the Old Testament, the five books of Moses. In this respect, and in the context of the Western tradition, the guest himself is the hidden power of repetition, and it is for all time a matter of symbolic mirror image as a question of depth. This means as long as the German artist continues to identify himself as the sole victim, his action and actions will remain a physical manifestation of a stealth and selective memory which may seem readable to the guest. Furthermore, to make this justified in the Western tradition, the German artist in that which the Western tradition called the new faith, i.e. the New Testament, 
must therefore carry reminiscence of Christian theology. A reading, I guess, seems to respect and at the same time to suspect and sometimes fear. This is what the notion of the guest's voice attests, his ability to name the unnamed. And this is precisely what possesses a problem to because as an integral part of dwelling in the loot, the Western tradition continues to represent the guest as the betrayal kiss, i.e. the betrayal of Christ. And so, therefore, whatever the devoted public may think, the guest is already always connected to the culture of mirroring, to the actions of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier, because it is that which no doubt represents the guest as a breathing universe, in order finally for him to pass beyond the position of the betraying witness into the status of the reliable witness, hence into the voice of the guest. We continue to inform the public at large about the hare hunting in the way that the German artist is still refusing to share. The result is that, regardless of their diverse motives, there are guests everywhere in the four corners of the earth. It is a given. <coughs> However, with regard to the Western territory, the guest is our sole text, a mirror, as it were, that reflects the endlessly the language of Ivrit into his daily measurement in Moed. And all this parallel to the ever-changing Ophek, the horizon of Galut, the mystery of the troubling calf, that what is set forth by the guest's voice, by his will to explain the meaning of birth, right to the civilized hunter and the brave soldier. Finally, the unfortunate omission of any reference to the Holocaust in the selective memory of the German artist cannot be accepted at this time. After all, the memory of the Holocaust is the very essence of that significant willingness to annihilate the voice of the ghost. In what follows, one would like to suggest that the gravity of the guest so is the nature of the loot, the troubling calf lion that hovers the surface of his panin face, and it is visible. It is the basis of his emet, true memory, the essence of his being. But this afternoon, as the sun disappearing below the horizon, precisely at this undecided moment of a formed organ blink, the guest in return will establish his own voice as both. The writing he dare not read in the habitat of the civilized hunter and the brave soldier, voiceful voice of the fallen angel which he rejects. That is, it remains a matter of visual delay. And the evidence for this reason is a public secret. The principle of the guest revelation 
his own visible action of their withdrawal, his willingness to walk hand in hand with the language of Ivrit, surrounded by the blackness of the black forest, Emet. It is real for the voice of the guest is kept alive. It is the voice of a man whose mother tongue is in constant conflict with the German artist Mask Panin. None of this is to deny. Here we are gazing at the voice of the guest, at the immense visibility of his need to explain the public at large about the mystery of the sacred revelation, relation, the unnamed and the unnamed and the named, and above all his wish to reform, as it were, the question about the project of hospitality, as it is misunderstood in the Western tradition. Thank you. 